I'm new. I just moved here from Africa. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? Oh my god, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Too Fast to Movie. I'm your host, Abraham, and with me is my co-host, Ben Collins, here to talk about another fantastic episode of Attack on Titan. Now, Ben, uh, you said something early in the show that I think you got to, in the oh. before we recorded, that you got to share. We're at a point in the season where, like, we're getting a break from the action, and we're we're in a little bit of a lull and personally i think that this episode may have been the closest we're ever going to get to a beach episode yeah and the fact that we are on a beach and the action has taken a break yeah but instead of you know bikinis it's lamenting at war crimes it's not a fun time that people yeah, are having it's, right now it, it's a very different vibe hey i mean lobster was eaten by but uh, that's a sensitive subject. We just lost. We just lost her. But she loved the lobster. She did. she loved it. And so she I, I consider to... this a successful beach episode of Attack on Titan. She would have wanted us to carry on and eat lobster in her name. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the uh, like button, comment, and subscribe because we post videos every week on the channel, so you'll always have a reason to come back. And hey. Spoilers ahead for this episode of Too Fast Too Movie as we talk about Brave Volunteers. So, we open this episode with a three-year flashback. We see the Marleyan scout ships coming to the island of Paradise. The scouts have started turning Marleyans into Eldian sympathizers. And we finally get an introduction for Yelena and Onya Capone. They were both forced to be soldiers by Marley until Zeke gave them hope. And as his liaison, they give Paradise a list of demands. What exactly they are, we do not see, but one of the stipulations of Zeke's secret plan is the founding titan and a titan of royal blood. I gotta say, I like I like what they did with this episode because right off the bat, you can tell the tone is way, is just back to the good old days. The oh, way yeah. Hanji is like yelling, like, "Hey, come on, friends! You want to have that tea?" And like just Z- Levi being like, "They're not gonna fall for your shitty skit." Like, <laughs> I after eight episodes of "Dear God, help me!" It's nice to hey, it's nice to go back. I said it. This is the beach episode. Dude. It is. This is yep. the we get to take a break and deal with. You know, the predecessor to the war crimes instead of active war crimes. Right. It's very different. Um, I mean, we're given a lot of setup, though, in this, and this is by no means an episode where the plot stands still. We get a ton of answers, and one of the interesting notes is the uh, 32 trips. uh, Oh, my God. Excuse me. 32 ships, technically Mm. trips, that were sent to to paradise. Yeah. And... The fact that we now know that uh, thanks to uh, thanks to Elena and Onya Capone, they were actively laying traps to commandeer those ships and build their own naval fleet. And their own army. So, yeah, it seems like Paradise really stepped their game up because Elena shows them the guns, which it seems like they implement their 3D maneuver gear into. Well, they've always had some rudimentary forms of firearms. It's really the... It's uh, the pistol. It's like the... It's the the semi-automatics that they're like, oh, holy shit, this is a game changer. And then like finding out that it's standard issue in the Marleyan military. And And there's a million soldiers. Yeah. It's really setting shit in just dire straits for the people of Paradise. Yeah, it's it's weird to think about this because... You know, for three seasons, we've only been in the world of Paradise. They've been in the Dark Ages, basically. They have, like, whatever form of firearms existed at the time of their separation from the rest of the world, which... And then nothing else. Yeah. 
so like they got they got basically just muskets and like i think they just got to the point where they have lever action um uh, rifles that sasha's using i don't know yeah. if that was a mistake if that was supposed to be a much older type of rifle because i i don't think we've seen them using like black powder or anything like fucking musketeer bullshit like having to reload it from the front with like a pipe I think that's what they were using at the beginning of season one before they fought the MPs. Because I think yeah. the MPs had, like, shells. They had... The MPs had... The MPs is what I was expecting them to roll up into mm-hmm. mar- the internment zone with. I was expecting them to roll up with that kind of gear. But instead they rolled up with fucking uh, missiles and uh, thunder spears. So it was way yeah. more heavy artillery than I thought it would be. But now we know why they've been able to upgrade so much. And it really is because of Yelena and Onka Capone being the kind of turncoats or Eldian freedom fighters that we now know them to be. Right. There's also another point that Yelena brings up, which is the reason why Paradise has been safe for so long. It's just because of the Titans. Like, simultaneously, it keeps the people of paradise in the walls but it also keeps everybody else out from land attack the the titan defense was they really did kind of luck out on that and by luck out i mean their victory had unintended consequences for them by allowing everyone to see a major moment of weakness in the marleyan troops which allowed for the war to begin in the first place Mm-hmm. which gave the people of paradise time because if they had had this time you bet your ass that a bunch of, of marleyan troops would have been just parked out by the sea by the time that they made it out there right so it did work out for them but they only would have their time for so long as pointed out by zeke in previous episodes where he's saying it's going to be time for us to reinvade and reclaim our titans right which now we know zeke had a different plan but we still don't know what it is it's a he said i think they literally said the word secret plan which is the most bs thing i've ever heard in my life (laughs) oh my god yeah this show loves keeping us in the dark well because it if Aaron didn't say anything, that wouldn't have worked. The only reason why they're even considering it is because Aaron is like, oh, actually, no, he's not BSing because I didn't want to tell you this information earlier because I didn't trust you, but that's, and, this, is, this is how you activate it. I mean, Aaron, had, Aaron has every right, and this is early enough that we that Aaron still... We still see those shreds of humanity in him and his deep care for his friends and Historia, which that was the whole thing last towards the end of the last season. Yeah, they basically went through like a life changing experience. Like he is responsible for killing her sister. And that that I don't know, that might change the relationship you have with someone. So, well. Not not even that, just the fact that, like, he didn't want Historia to be turned into a weapon by the upper brass oh, yeah. of uh, the uh, Paradise military. Because, right. I mean, as much as Historia is technically the ruler, we all know who the people making the major decisions are for the most part. It was the commanders. It was the, yeah. it was the brass. And, yeah, they were only using her as, like, a pawn in order to set up, like, like she, like she was an installed queen. They could just as easily take her out for other purposes if they wanted to. Potentially. Potentially. I'm, I am I think that she might... Well, I, I'm going to be honest. We have no idea what the political situation on Paradise is right now. Mm-hmm. So we, we just got to wait till next episode, and then we're going to see how things with Historia are, but we have to wait till next episode. My question really is and i think the question on a lot of people's minds is is zeke thinking of using the rumbling or does zeke's have some sort of other not genocidal plan that we don't know about do you think that zeke would have any reason to suspect that aaron knows about the conditions needed to uh, activate the rumbling oh i mean is there any way that zeke could know that 
Um, I'm trying to think. Zeke understands how Titans work. He understands the past memories. He understands the... Uh, well, he understands the past memories alone, which is a big deal. And hypothetically, mm-hmm. if Aaron possesses the um, founding Titan, he could have some of those memories. So... Mm-hmm. The fact is that there's always room on the table for Aaron to know more than Zeke is accounting for. Right. So but my point is, my point really was that if Zeke knows that Aaron knows, then that changes whether or not he's actually thinking about using the rumbling. Because if he knows that Aaron knows, then he's probably not trying to do the rumbling. I think at this point he has to. I think at this point he has to consider that Aaron potentially knows what he has. I don't think mm-hmm. it's Zeke is smart enough that I don't think he would make a move assuming ignorance of another party. Because then it's likely that it's not the rumbling he wants to do. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you were, if if it was, you would just write if activate the rumbling. Y- right. You would just tell yeah. them outright. Why would you? Why would you try and hide it if well, you know I guess that they know? Different question is: Does he think that Aaron knows, or does he think that the military knows? I don't. I don't know who knows. It's I don't. <laughs> this entire show is we don't know who knows what who knows. Like <laughs> get a and, get a get a cork board with red red string. Just, yeah, it's it's really just required for Attack on Titan at this point. But yeah. yeah, no, I I I don't think it's a safe assumption. I think Zeke needs to. I would like to see a plan that doesn't involve the rumbling. I mm-hmm. think my question, and we're about to touch up on this, but uh, does Aaron feel the same way? And uh, how cautious are we going to have to be with both of these characters going forward? Well, they're uh, Paradise is t- definitely taking precautions, even after Yelena gives him the Titan Serum. Pixies, which thank God we, P- Pixies is still around. Thank God, I, I love that character. Um, <laughs> but they they just start pulling guns on them and they're just like, yeah, sorry, we gotta we gotta take precautions because the Beast Titans here. They separate Aaron and Zeke. Zeke goes to the forest with a bunch of trees, and that it's funny because he because Levi calls him a monkey man, so he's like, yeah, that's your perfect home. Um, that would that, that's so fucked up if the person that you're talking to is not white. I'm just gonna. Oh yeah, that, yeah. It, there's th- th- there was also another like slightly racially tinged moment this episode, but that's a that I, wasn't I that bad. That wasn't uh, bad because it was Sasha who asked, so you know there was no <laughs> ill intent. You know, <laughs> and then two, they literally have not seen black people. Yeah, like they've never seen any. The only person of color in the whole show was Mikasa. Yeah, that's it. So like, I would totally freak out to him. Like, hey, um, I don't like hate it, but like, what? Uh, why? Why? Does your, why does your skin look like that? <laughs> that's that's weird. I've never seen that. Um, but regardless, I think we should we should try to move on, just yeah. because there are a lot of unknowns. So, as the flashbacks continue, we see a Marleyan chef named Niccolo, cook for the scouts, Sasha in particular. Obviously, Sasha loves it. Niccolo blushes as Sasha calls him a food genius. But in the present day, as we're reintroduced to Sasha's father and Niccolo cries at Sasha's grave, we see Niccolo offer to cook them a wonderful meal on the house. A beautiful moment. Armin later laments the actions taken in Liberio and wonders if there was ever another option. He makes a remark that they're in the same position that the warrior candidates were in four years ago, right in front of the still crystallized Annie. All the while, Aaron is noticeably absent from the scout flashbacks. The only time that we ever see him is when he's practicing his aim and I guess being realistic about the possibility of having peace with Marley. We got to so, uh, we got to put some air quotes about realistic. Yeah, definitely but, um, real it's quote quote realistic quote because real, I it's it's pessimistic is what it is if we're being true. honest cuz there's 
I think that in earlier on, they actually had a much better chance of establishing any sort of peace talks because they, in that moment when they have that kind of upper hands, they have nego they have enough leverage to do negotiating. And when they have all those ships, like they could have easily, and I don't know, this is something that we're going to see in the next episode, but the plan easily could have just been to build defense forces strong enough to allow for negotiations to happen. Yeah. Now, but then... if that's what the rumbling is designed for, mm-hmm. then that's cool. However, uh, probably shouldn't have committed war crimes to get the things that you needed for the rumbling. So uh, that's just me. I mean, but, was there another way to do it? Because, I mean, Zeke can't, like, willingly just leave the internment zone without being killed on site. I mean... That's the okay, thing. Okay, I guess you may have needed to commit... I, I guess some war crimes are necessary. I guess well, some that, war crimes are necessary. How big Marley's army is, is too much for the 32 scout ships that they have and the motley crew that they have on Paradise. It's not enough. Yeah. And you're not even taking into account like the rest of the world, hypothetically, if they wanted to jump on Paradise. And add the add the different Titans to the mix as well, and you're just put up with a you're right. put up with a really tough fight for Paradise. Like you, th- from where they are currently in the story, after the four years were up, Willie was going to declare war anyways. Well, actually, maybe not if Zeke hadn't told them. I don't know, but regardless. Well, they say they need the rumbling as a line of defense, and there's no way to get a Titan with royal blood and not sacrifice Historia without getting Zeke. Yeah. No, it's... um. I think that they... Personally, I think they made the... I can't say that they made the right move, but they made a move. Again, it's... Throughout this beach episode, we have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just still calling we, it we have it things that point towards an a differing outcome from this. And it's both in that conversation that Armin has with Aaron while he's aiming, but also it gets really personified by uh, Niccolo. And it's this idea of the potential peace and reconciliation between these people. Yeah. So with... Niccolo, who again, this is this is the beach episode, so he is making lobster and Sasha is eating it and loving it, and it's 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 really cute scene, and we all miss her very much. Um, but with that, we see that Niccolo is someone that like went in fully believing that these people were all monsters. And then fully recognizes the humanity of everyone involved. Yeah. Went from calling someone a devil to crying at their funeral. What a... Wow. Serious development in that character. But there's also a complicated history here. Because even at the beginning of him crying at the grave, he's being kicked... And yeah. assaulted by Marla by uh, not Marlans, uh by Eldians from Paradise. Which now we we're kinda like I mean, it sucks because now we're seeing the Eldians committing some of the same like heinous acts that we've seen Marleans commit. Yeah. Like they were I mean, even last episode, yeah, Gabby shot Sasha, but they're children. They were beating children. Yeah. It's it's worrying it's and like we we see uh we see shit face mcgee again for like a hot second and a half um one when they're talking about zeke oh, being yeah. the just untrustworthy and having demolished the survey corpse mm-hmm. so we we see plenty of it we, we see plenty of the hostility that's still going here and then even going to Aaron's argument of peace being unobtainable because as I'm as loosely quote as loosely quoted as I can say it everyone outside of the island sees them as monsters that can turn into titans and they're right yeah so it's really difficult to deal with 
the idea of there being a misconception when people's fears have some actual root and not only that he's a living example of those fears and so is armin in those moments something that i guess isn't addressed is how exactly it went all wrong because as armin talks about the his hope for peace and as we see nicolo personifying that we still don't get an answer as to when exactly Aaron left, under what conditions he left, if he went of his own accord or went by himself, or if he was instructed and then went by himself. We don't understand a lot of the context for how we got specifically to where we saw ourselves a few episodes ago. Um, so I'm... I, I, I think we're getting that next episode. It doesn't seem like we're done with these flashbacks and right. the storytelling that we're going to be getting during this time. Um, mm -hmm. But there's still a lot of like missing pieces that we need to figure out. The pure Titan defense is gone, and I honestly think that Aaron probably went rogue because he sees the rumbling as the only option of keeping people at bay, if not completely outright destroying everyone yeah, i mean that would make the most sense i mean because he says it outright um one more thing actually in that moment they did a great thing they panned um with sasha with uh with aaron's gun and when he fired the gun as he's practicing his aim it cuts to the moment that we see sasha getting shot by Ooh, yeah Gabby. Did, the studio mappa has some really good video editing for right. uh and scene transitions for this season. So, yeah, that, w that was a clutch moment, actually. But, I mean, I think that kind of solidifies at least what the writer is intending in this moment, that it is Aaron's fault that Sasha is dead. Yeah. It is not, it's, that's a, that's a confirmation. I completely agree, and there's definitely no way of getting around that intentional imagery, and I still... I I still I see plenty of the fandom ragging on Sasha, and I think you guys need to cool it. Oh, you mean Gabby? Oh, excuse me. Uh, people are not ragging on Gabby. Everyone's uh, on Sasha. Oh my god! I can't. <laughs> they look the same. They they, they the are. Same. They're the same goddamn character model. I can fucking point that out all I want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. I I think everyone's ragging on Gabby a little too hard. Aaron is really the one that we should all be a little bit more concerned with right now. Yeah, we we need to figure out what's Aaron because he is staring at himself, like blankly in the mirror in a jail cell. It seems it's the first shot they show of him is just his forearms resting against the sink. The shots in this show, oh my god, that was a chilling moment. I mean. We got to be a little bit more concerned about Aaron, but also let, let's point out the elephant in the room. Oh, yeah. We definitely need to talk about this. We finally see Annie after, in real life, what, like 10 years? How long has it been since season one ended? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's been that long, but, but I think bro, like five-ish, six-ish? Something like that. But yeah, regardless, it's... we see her for the first time. In a hot minute. Um, and we just saw the Warhammer Titan crystallize herself in the same way. In that sort of like egg-shaped thing. When the Warhammer Titan did it, they were conscious. Does that mean Annie is conscious right now? It's been a really long time. So she could just be in like a deep slumber right now. Mm -hmm. But there is a chance that she's been... At least anything that's been happening near her, she's been able to hear, but probably just not react to. Right. It's She's definitely not as, she does not have the same powers as the Warhammer. She does not have, like, she can't do anything from inside the crystal. Mm -hmm. But I think it's safe to say that she is still somewhat cognizant based off of the rules that we've seen. It would be a little weird for them to establish a rule about these Titan shells and then completely disregard it for another character when we see an almost identical Titan shell. So for me, right. it doesn't make sense for her to not be conscious or at it would least also, cognizant. It would also just be very convenient if if and when 
I'm assuming she does is going to get released and not just, you know, bodied. Um, <laughs> but it, it's going to be super convenient if Armin has been talking to her and telling her everything that's been going on. Yeah. For four years. And she's already up to speed on everything. She doesn't need a recap. She it would just be... get into the story. It, yeah, it would it would it would allow things to move forward a lot more, and it would also potentially allow a much more interesting character dynamic to be added to the conflict. This is yeah. someone who under I think that Annie understands the true nature of this conflict a lot more. She was the most reluctant to go in and be in this position, and she's definitely fully aware that what she and the other warriors did started well. this whole mess. Yeah. So she she has to be she has to be in on it. I'm sure she has a very strong opinion. Um, It'll be an interesting arc to see. Well, we'll see unfold. if that arc happens in the first place, because uh, or at least is put in danger. Because Aaron recently just got Warhammer Titan powers. Yep. So if he has that kind of hardening, what's to say he can't break through Annie's shell? Yeah, like shattering a diamond with a diamond. Uh, it would be very weird for Aaron to suddenly get the female Titan powers, though. That would be kind of ridiculous. I don't know. I what would that character model look like? Is, is it just Aaron with with badonkadonks? Is what that are what the we're female Titan? What are the female Titans' powers? Is it um, just honkers? Is that it's it? not? It, no, it's not just honkers. I'm pretty sure it's like endurance and like she had that whole thing where she could like call other Titans. Mm -hmm. And they would all just kind of start eating her. But isn't that Zeke's power? I don't... Th I th This show can be a little weird. I, I don't want to look up her powers because I don't want yeah. spoilers. And that's what this show does when you Google things. Could you imagine it's just like... We just like accidentally want... get spoiled and her powers are just like insane god mode can... Can, <laughs> like i don't know what well, they like, should have never survived season one she can travel through time goes back to season one and just gets Aaron again so that the whole thing never happens hey anything's possible studio mappa what do you got for us well we're gonna what do they have for us indeed because next episode on attack on titan there is but one quote that stands out amongst the rest without any allies on the outside they must kill their enemies to live. And the episode is titled, A Sound Argument. We don't really get a lot of imagery. It's mostly people's faces talking to one another. So there's not like a... This isn't like a... Like, it's not like a, the, the war arc that we just saw where we can tell this is exactly what's going to happen and we can kind of guess. We're kind of in uncharted waters again. Um, but I think one thing that I think you and I would agree on that we need to see is Historia. We need to know what is going on within her mind right now. I mean, definitely. She's the leader of these people and has been forced into a war by one of her closest friends. Yeah. Like, this is a very... I, I In general, this is just a sticky situation. And I think what we're also going to get based off of the episode title and the quote is I think we're going to get that explanation that we've been oh so waiting for. Not just potentially from Zeke. From Aaron. But Aaron. Yeah. Sound argument is usually said from someone who isn't making sense. Or you know what I mean? Like in the context. making too much sense. I mean, but like it's usually like in an attempt to persuade. I think that. This That's is going to be weird. somewhat akin to an inconvenient truth. Yeah, and and given the context, it, is... it, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, so we're gonna wait and see. We'll be back next week to look we at will. that. So guess what? If you're gonna come back next week, you gotta hit the like, comment, and subscribe. You gotta hit <laughs> with the old one, two, three. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Too Fast to Movie. I'm Abraham. That's Ben. And hey, you should listen to our other podcast, Return of the Movie. We actually post it here on YouTube and on Spotify and Amazon Music. So just look up Return of the Movie and you'll find it. We're also covering WandaVision on another episode of Too Fast, Too Movie here on the channel. So hey, check that out. Something you might like with superheroes and flying. Whoa, the X-Men? 
That's crazy. Yeah, that that's happening. If you don't understand that, go watch WandaVision and it's then really watch show. our show. Yeah, because we, do, we we have a little deep dive with that. It's a fun time. But uh, until then, guys, until next week, it's too fast a movie.